Good evening, KZFR. This is Reddin on Air, and I just realized I was way too close for the mic for that one, so I hope I didn't blow anyone's eardrums out. Uh, this is Reddin on Air uh, from KZFR, and I am Kevin, your host, here with my host, uh, Nick and Natalie, my new host, I should say. Howdy. Hello. And our new slash old guest, because you've been here a few times, which is going to be awesome, uh, Jan. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I love having you on here. You've been on the show uh, t- three more times. Wow, three? I thought it was two. I'm, I miscounted. I'm sorry. That's so cool. Okay. So I think you should plug yourself a little bit because you have a lot of stuff going for you, a book and, and possibly more stuff in the works. Excellent. Yes. Um, I self-published a book last year of poetry called Often Overlooked. It's available at Amazon.com. And I am currently working on mm, maybe one or two other endeavors. Mm-hmm. But Would- they're they're very much in the In the pipe. In the pipe. They're not in the can yet. And I'm sure we'll have you on the show when those come out. I would love that. That would be fantastic. So uh, real quick, before we get kind of diving into your pieces here, uh, if you want to be part of the show or have questions or suggestions or really anything, you can write to me or submit to me at write.onair at gmail.com. That's W-R-I-T-E dot onair at gmail.com. Um, I check that most often. We have a Facebook page too, and uh, all of my shows are put up on YouTube usually within a couple days. So you can follow there if you'd like, but my most direct access will be um, emailing me. That's when I, when I check most often. So that being said, uh, tell us what your first piece is. Uh, well, tonight I thought I would like to talk about what inspires. Uh, I often am asked, what, what made you write this? What, what inspires you? And what I realized looking through what I've published and what I am working on, there are quite a variety of things that can, can inspire writing. So this first piece is called On Meeting a Real Poet. So it's uh, about meeting a real poet. Okay. Struck by her cocoa skin, her language, and her confidence, immediately I felt the differences between us pushing us apart. She, so much older, recognized near and far for her skill with words, her soft speaking, powerful voice, coming from a past, a nation of strife and opportunities withheld. Published, prized, working harder than I ever have. I felt my whiteness, privilege oozing out, covering me and leaving a cloud billowing out for me, even as I stood quietly. I felt too loud with nothing important to say, because my life has been based on my choices, not the father's. But her gentle handshake and the glint in her eye when the dancing began, I watched her feet moved to tap the rhythm that matched my own. I listened to her words and found more sameness than distance between her words and my ears. Oh, man. I like that because it starts out with an initial impression. There's like uh, the first glance and then it slowly builds in depth as it's going down, which is really how we all read poetry. There's a first initial glance and then it starts to kind of build up as we read more and gather more pieces to it, which is, in my opinion, like a good writing style. So I think you qualify as a poet here, but tell us some more about the background of this and stuff. So this poem came from a visit to listen to her speak uh, there was a gala pretty much held. Her name is uh, Jorgina Herrera. Uh, she's a Cubana poet. She's published through Cubana Books. And there was a, a reception held for her. So she did some reading. There was dancing. There was Cuban food. There was all kinds of um, merriment and uh, silent auction to support the, the book publishing endeavor. And when she got up to speak, there was just this hush that fell upon the room and I realized that I was near greatness and to call myself a poet in the presence of someone such as she was a little overwhelming and I realized as I sat there and listened and then really listened that we were far more similar than different. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Well I like your point that um you know her poems. Uh, you could you could still really connect to them very personally. Uh, you know, obviously, I feel that that's a that's a mark of a great poet is that even if they're writing very personal, very um, uh, intimate stories about themselves and uh, conveying that through verse, uh, 
that it still sounds universal and that anybody, no matter what their background, can feel like it's coming from coming from themselves or speaking to them. Yeah. I related to this poem so much. Um, my first semester at Chico State, I actually got to meet um, Nancy Marajon, who is, do you know who she is? Oh my gosh, and it's the same feeling. Like I love that you italicized real in the in the title because that's how it feels really. It's just like, I'm nothing in comparison to this person and how could I ever say anything as true as this person that has lived this life? And I just felt that same connection when I finally got to stand next to her and I was like, wow, this is fantastic and you've inspired me even more to keep writing. So I love this. Well, thank you. It was a, a pleasure to attend her, her gala and to be a part of it and to just meet all of the different people who were coming to support her. It was a very diverse group. And I think by the end of the evening, we all had shared something very, very special. So that was an inspiration to write about. Man, that's a solid, strong pick for this theme for tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost like you know what you're doing, which you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to have you on the show, by the way. This is so much fun. Uh, the previous shows we've had you on, it was, it was a blast. So I'm really looking forward to your next pieces. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, you know, we can't always be going to parties and meeting famous people to inspire us. So I have, I mean, I'm 50 years old and I have quite a bit of, you know, stuff in my house. Not too cluttered, it's lived in. And one of the things that I think about often are the pictures that I have, the photographs I have. And sometimes when I look at those pictures, I remember them and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I see things that I had often, in the past, overlooked. Imagine. Uh, this next poem is about a photograph, uh, and it is called Can You See Her? The photograph is old, the kind received back in the mail after film was sent in for processing, exposures limited to the number of frames in a roll. This photograph holds precious memories rationed out held dear like those in albums, boxes, and drawers, names and dates and places on the back, or sometimes on the white border. This photograph shows three, the grandma beaming, bottle feeding the tiny boy held snugly in her arms, the red-faced boy not yet used to being in the air, so new and hungry, and the girl standing to his side, displaced. This photograph could be two separate scenes. One, a joyous meeting, warm and filling, accidentally connected to another of a girl staring off, wondering if she is actually there. This old photograph shows truth from the past, but now the grandma has died, her smile seen only in photos and in dreams. The boy has grown. He's become accustomed to being in the air his hunger sated, he's a chef. But the girl, a woman now, still stands to the side, staring off, disconnected, wondering if she is even actually here. What are you guys' thoughts, if you have any? What was the initial impression from the poem? <laughs> um, as far as the ending goes, I'm because this is the first time I've ever heard it, I'm guessing that the, the girl who becomes a woman hasn't changed at all by the end. She's still the same person, just in a different photograph. I, I think you can read it that way. This was not written during a particularly great time in my life. This is actually a photograph of my grandmother holding my baby brother, okay. and I was three in the picture. And I looked at my face in that picture and thought, what is that little girl doing there? Look at, he's so little and helpless and all the attention is on him. And there I am, stepped back, <laughs> not really there. I'm not looking at the camera in the picture. And I, I wrote this after a, a situation in my life where I watched something else go on and I felt very detached still, even as, a, as an adult. Yeah, there, were, there was a strange um, balance there of like, you're you're observing this picture and it, it does feel like family and it, it does feel like uh, these people should be close to you but the speaker never refers to themselves so there is a kind of um like you said uh kind of a detachment um that comes across in the poem 
a good a good first reading, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's always when I think with the advent of selfies and with so many pictures out there that it's really easy to take 15 or 20 shots and pick the best one. Um, this picture was taken you know, over 40 years ago when you had 12 exposures mm -hmm. and you had to make them count. So I know that I'm pretty sure my mother took the picture and I know that she was waiting until my brother had just the right look on his face and grandma was smiling and it didn't really matter so much what Jan was doing because she was just kind of on the side. She wasn't really connected. Man, yeah, the effort is much more thought out and in practice and really concentrated when you have limited things you can work sure. with for the media. Yeah, I think on uh, one of Nick's shows, it probably was, um, where he had submitted, we talked about, um, I think it was like media, inspiring media, like how art can kind of like transcend and keep inspiring and, and being connected, which is, again, perfect for the show that you pick. <laughs> um, and also, I really like, uh, oh, of course, I lose my train of thought right at this second. Um, there was one point in that piece. Nope, totally gone. Actually, yeah, let me see the book real quick. Maybe it'll jump I'll my say, memory. I'll say um, that's kind of like a form of ekphrasm. If you've ever heard of that? Um, when yeah. you look at a piece of art and then you create poetry off of it, it's a response to what you're seeing. And so that was kind of the feeling that I got there was this is an ekphrastic response to a photograph. And I've really been working to try and do that. I think that that's amazing that you've written that because I think that that's the best way to get your brain going and inspire yourself to write is to just look at something from your own life, even a picture. And it's a really good reflection and a jumping off point. So, Well, I'm very excited because I just learned a new word. Yeah. <laughs> so I do that all the time. I think that's a great uh, way to look at inspiration is, say that word again? Ekphrasm or ekphrastic response. Um, oh, I had an ekphrastic response to that painting. Excellent. I see more of that in my future. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember what I was going to say. Uh, we've had pieces in the show in the past that, um, and again, this was on one of Nick's shows that we talked about, which is really relevant. Um, pieces being snapshots of what's going on in that exact moment. And sometimes you can't quite relate to them or you have to put yourself in the emotion again to present them. And pictures are one of those really amazing forms of art that the emotion is there no matter what. You aren't really going to be able to read too much into it unless the picture is kind of ambiguous. Um, writing, you can read kind of different ways and it's different for whoever is reading it, but a, a picture is, is solidified. It's just ironed out like this is what it is. And it's, it's a really amazing idea to take and write about. I just really appreciate that. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another thing that was inspiring to me, and this goes back into my college class days, I was challenged to write in form. So there are many different styles of poetry. I'm afraid of most of them. I much prefer to write off the top of my head, put in line breaks where they make the most sense to me. And so writing in form has been a challenge. And sometimes I'm up for a challenge. And I went back and forth with a friend and we texted haikus because haikus are pretty, uh, you know, they're short, 575, and they're pretty accessible. So we would write back and forth about our, our day in haikus. And this is a haiku-inspired day, or part of a day, called Chores, a Meditation. Laundry languishing, meandering and moldy, weights in the washer. Dogs dancing for food, nails click on hardwood floors. I bow to their bowls. Particles settle, every surface is covered, dusting seems futile. With children and pets, getting the floors clean is like vacuuming the beach. Overwhelmed, I leave, escape to the grocery store, I forget my list. But we need ketchup, I aim for the condiments, hypnotized by rows. Rows, shelves, and aisles, everything is in its place, the order calms me. I wander and choose many things not on my list. Hurry to check out. I drive across town, treat myself to a mocha, head back to the house. Counter is loaded. The unwashed dishes thwart me. Bags go on the floor. Making new order here. Unloading, calisthenics, things are shaping up. Dryer is humming. Entropy no longer reigns. I forgot ketchup. <laughs> I, 
I have a, I love poetry when writing <laughs> just because it's, it's so freeing and there's so many directions you can go with it. But I have a really s a large soft spot for haikus because to me, it's like playing a game because you have to stick with these rules. And this entire piece came across is just wonderfully playful the entire time. It was so beautiful. Well, that was my response to writing in form yeah. it, is make it playful because uh, it's so serious. Form is serious. So not sonatas, that's music. Um, but any of those forms that have rhyme schemes or repeating word structures can be pretty daunting, especially to a, a hobbyist writer or a, or a new writer. Right. And the rhythms can seem really unnatural to um, an American voice, I feel like. Like, um, I went to school in the UK, and so uh, they're, in their poetic history, they stayed very close to forms. And they still write very, you know, formulaic or not formulaic but uh, metrical and um, you know structured poems whereas for the past 100 years I feel like America has gone the complete opposite direction and uh, poetry has been a little more influenced by jazz and um, you know sort of the Walt Whitman style um, so this is this is a interesting kind of marriage of a very restrictive Japanese uh, form and kind of creating an American voice out of it <laughs> Again, I mean no disrespect to the art form, uh, but it, it's similar to saying, okay, Jan, sit down at a piano and play. I, I, I've got like, okay, I can play a little heart and soul, got maybe some chopsticks, but I, I, what I would be able to do with that is fairly limited. The nice thing about writing in form is I take it as a challenge. So writing, I wrote a sonnet and sonnets require certain numbers of syllables and rhyming words. So to write my sonnet, I made lists of words that rhymed and then chose words and picked a story out of that rather than, oh, I have this thought and, I'm, and I have all these rhyming words in my head. That's, that was not my process. Man, I wanna emphasize that too. Um, that is a, an amazing creative process. We have a lot of people that we talk to on here who are, are when we ask them, how do you write? And they say, I just sit down and I just do it. I just go as hard as I can and, and as much as I can. And I just comes from my mind and I just pour it out. And you took it almost the entire direction. We went a different direction where you said, I'm going to take all these ideas that I have and kind of write them out and organize them myself and in a very a playful way again, and then just kind of coalesce them and see what happens, which is brilliant in my opinion. I wanted to say that form can be an excellent way to rein in if you have a crazy idea for a poem and then you have to kind of bring yourself down to earth form is a great grounding mechanism for a writer but I wanted to also compliment you on your word choices here especially because it's a haiku and you have to go by syllables and I just thought that every word was beautifully chosen and I liked that it had this kind of list quality to it because you're going down and completing tasks throughout your day and I love that that was the actual full-on form that all these haikus took in one long extended thing poem I would say <laughs> I thought it was great. Thank you. I, I do have a dear, dear fondness, deep fondness for words. So I will try to use a more interesting word rather than a, a more common word, which sometimes comes off as sounding a little um, hoity-toity, little pinkies up, <laughs> but uh, that's not my intention, but wouldn't you rather, you know, instead of talking about the grass, wouldn't you rather talk about, you know, I've done some research, find out what kind of grass that is. Oh, that's the kind of grass they grow on golf courses, um, and it has a, this name, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like the specificity. The more specific I can make an idea, I think the more, the more it brings to a piece, and if I can make people look words up, I get pretty excited. Yeah, that's a big one too. Go ahead, Nick. I heard you nod in there. <laughs> oh, I just got to collect my thoughts for a second. Um, you said something that reminded me of uh, uh, some of the best poetry writing advice I've ever heard is out of a book called um, The Poetry Home Repair Manual by Ted Kuzer. <laughs> and he talks a lot about particular detail. And so in, um, I think the example he gives is that, you know, the temptation is that when you want to write about a dive bar and you want to get across how seedy it is you know the old guy hunched over the bar at the at, at the far back and sort of the peeling posters and the paint and everything it starts to feel like every other bar that you've ever seen in like a b movie or something like that but um 
if you start adding particular detail and things that people aren't used to, uh, like a, um, I don't know, a box of spark plugs on the counter or like uh, motor oil stains behind the counter and you know, you see the guy's uh, sleeves are rolled up and they have these black stains all over. You start getting, you start seeing a lot more of the rest of the bar, even though you haven't explained it, you know. I agree. I think that anytime you can put in something that surprises your reader, yeah. uh, for me, a lot of times those are smells that smell like something to me that you wouldn't expect to find there. Yeah. So when you were describing the bar, I'm thinking, oh yeah, there's these regular smells that you would think about, like the old carpet that has just, you know, has just booze tamped down into it. But maybe you also smell like there's a, an air freshener in the bathroom and when the door opens, you get this gust of, you know, flowers that's unexpected. And I think that's the kind of detail that you could put in a piece that really gets people's attention, makes them feel like they're there. Well, Jen, we're, we're nearing not quite the end yet, but I wanted to leave some time because we have some, some interesting stuff planned for the end of the show. Um, I wanted to segue into a question for you. Certainly. Um, and I'll make you think on the spot here, but I think, I think it'll be a pretty simple one. Um, so you said there are things in the pipe right now, books and stuff possibly, and who knows what else. I won't, uh, I won't pin you down on what they're coming, what they're, what they're going to be, but what, uh, staying in line with the theme of the show, what inspires you most to go back and write another book or something like that? Hmm. That's an excellent question. Uh, my list of things that I find inspirational is always changing. Um, currently the things that make me laugh, I want to put in poems. Um, most times it's something someone has said, like I turn a phrase that I haven't heard before and I'm, I'm hard pressed to pull one out right now, but I teach middle school and kids will say things that they're trying to explain a concept and they will use words in, in a way that just makes your head tilt a little bit and trying to get my students to use words like we're doing astronomy right now. And they say, well, it, cer it, it goes around the sun. And I'm like, well, what's it, right? So trying to get them to be more specific. And in trying to explain this, this new concept, they will sometimes have a turn of phrase that it, it's just, it's inspiring. So for example, here's one. Um, the question is, what causes seasons on Earth? And there was a, a very, I think it was said to be funny, but well, when you turn the calendar, then it's, it's the next, it's <laughs> the next season because after April is May and then it's summer. And I thought that was a really interesting uh, perspective to, to bring that e turning the calendar the, changes the season. Even the phrase turning the calendar is such a, like you can play with that a lot, like physically turning around the <laughs> calendar, you know? Right, yeah. exactly. So, um, a lot of what people say, um, there have been news stories that have words, just sometimes single words that stick out. Last time I was here, I shared a poem about a retirement home that um, has put a bus stop out front because there are people with Alzheimer's keep trying to leave. And so they just put a, a non-functional bus stop outside. And so I wrote a piece about going to the bus stop and just sitting there and then realizing that you're already home. And, and going back in to where you live. So things like that, I think, are still pretty inspiring. Man, I found a lot of, uh, I will say, talented writers, because I think you qualify for this. Well, thank you. Um, find inspiration in many different places. It's never just one singular thing. Sometimes it might change, like you're saying, where maybe this is the predominant thing that you're, you're grasping onto right now. But I think um, there's a lot of stability and consistency that is allowed when there's a wide development of, of inspiration. Mm -hmm. So that'll lead us into the next point. Um, you brought up something that is really cool. Go ahead and explain your idea for this. Well, I know that you have some pretty regular listeners and they, I think, I'm guessing just from what I know about being kind of a hobbyist writer, that a lot of the folks who listen to you are also wanting to write. So I would welcome a challenge. So I'm going to throw out a challenge to your listeners and I'm going to give you some words, uh, two words actually, to be your inspiration. And I think when I say the words, you'll see that they're a great jumping off point and you could take them in a number of ways. So the challenge is this, 
take the words that I'm going to tell you and write about them. Make them into a poem, make them a short story, uh, and then email them to Kevin so that we have something to talk about. And I'll, I'll, I'll prompt the email after this, but go ahead. Excellent. So the words that I'm thinking of are birthday cake. And I'm not going to say anything else because I'm going to do my own writing on that one. Oh, man. I'm incredibly excited for this because one of the first ideas I'd had for the show was to do themes and stuff. And I wasn't sure if I was ever going to be able to have an opportunity to present those because I wanted people to be able to, to come on and be part of the show and I didn't want to restrict anyone. But now we're at a point now where I think this is perfect. This is going to be a really cool thing. And I should remind everyone too, usually people who are on the show or submit, uh, I usually fit in, I would say three to five pieces. Um, but for this particular challenge, um, I will fit in as many as I can for the show. I so think it, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably have to speed through a lot of them so we won't be able to get quite as in depth, but I mean, I think it would be phenomenal to have as many as we could. This is an exercise I've done with writing groups and in classes before. It's a great warm up, and if you're already writing, it can just be a great, uh, just a great piece starter, and it can go a million different ways. Yeah. Um, just endless numbers of ways. For some people, that birthday cake will recede into the background of what they're talking about. For some people, it'll be the whole experience. Yeah, and you aren't specifying any format, not poem, not haiku. Uh, you know, one challenge at a time. Yeah, you right, know how right. I feel about form. Next show you come on, we'll, we'll, we'll prompt something different. Then. It has to be a sonnet. <laughs> and then all what of our viewers... What rhymes with cake? What rhymes with cake? <laughs> if we limit it to a sonnet, contrived. everyone will just disappear. We'll get right. no submissions. Sonnets are hard. They're worth it, mm -hmm. but they're, they're difficult. I have one. As in a previous show that I've been on, in another show we'll do that, I promise. Um, so I think plug yourself again and, and what you've done and, and all that stuff because we're nearing the end and I want to give you as much opportunity as I can. Excellent. Well, this is Jan Matthews coming to you live from KZFR <laughs> right there next to Kevin, Nick, and Natalie. And uh, my book is called Often Overlooked. It is available at Amazon.com for the low, low price of twelve ninety five. Pretty good, man. And uh, I'm lucky to have a coffee, which I read actually more often than you would think. Um, I'm trying to think what else. If there's anything else I wanted to touch on, uh, the words for this show for the prompt is birthday cake. Birthday um, cake and your email address? Yeah. Email address is uh, write.onair at gmail.com. W-R-I-T-E dot onair at gmail.com. And uh, unless you guys can think of anything, I think um, this is probably going to wrap up the show now. Yeah. Everyone shrugged at the same time. So I'm assuming <laughs> well, thank you. I'm going to write a birthday cake poem. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know about Natalie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, I'm going to write a sonnet. Oh, 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 teacher's pet. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. This is going to well, be quite nice. Thank you show. so much for having me. It is always a pleasure to be here. It has I do been appreciate wonderful, it. and you're definitely going to be back. I'm just going to say that like right now. <laughs> it's a definite thing. This has been Writing on Air at KZFR 90.1, and uh, I hope everyone has a good night, and thanks for tuning in to the show. 